Hello and welcome back. In this and the following videos, I will discuss two important special cases of the General Metropolis Hastings algorithm. The special case we are going to discuss in this video is described in section 4.1.3 and is called Random Walk Metropolis Sample. I will discuss this variant in the case of continuous state space, so let's just recall how Metropolis Hastings works for continuous state space. Here's what we wrote in the previous video. We are now given the target distribution in form of a density, so that pi is the density, and we want to generate a Markov chain with stationary distribution pi. And the transitions for the proposals are given in form of a transition density that is called p here, and that p tells us, given we are currently at x, what is the distribution of the proposal, and that's given as a density as a function of y. From that, we are going to compute alpha later, and we generate proposals and accept proposals with probability alpha given by this formula. So what makes this the random walk metropolis algorithm? There are two steps to get there. First, the special case where the proposals are symmetric in the sense that jumping from x to y has the same probability as jumping from y to x. And in this case, the algorithm is called the metropolis algorithm. So if the proposals are symmetric, which means if probability of going from x to y equals probability of going from y to x, and I have to write that here as densities for all possible states x and y, then the algorithm is called the metropolis algorithm. And historically, that was the first version. So metropolis first developed the algorithm for this case with symmetric distribution for the proposals, and then Hastings came later and generalized it to what's now known as the Metropolis-Hastings algorithm. So this is called the Metropolis algorithm. And that plays a special role because in this case the form of alpha simplifies a bit. So generally we have alpha xy for the continuous case is minimum of density pi at y pyx divided by pi of x pxy and the minimum with 1 to make it a probability. And if P is symmetric, these two terms cancel, and what we get is just minimum pi of y divided by pi of x with 1. So that simplifies things a bit. And the random walk metropolis algorithm is a special case of this metropolis algorithm. So what do we need to add to make it a random walk metropolis algorithm? That is, the proposals are taken from the steps of a random walk. So for the random walk metropolis algorithm, we assume that the proposal yj is computed at the previous state plus some increment, epsilon j, where the distribution of epsilon j is symmetric. And in this case, it just means epsilon j and minus epsilon j have the same distribution, and that is assumed to make this condition true. And we can work with this simplified acceptance probability, which just has pi of y over pi of x in. And we don't, in this case, need to assume anything about what the increments epsilon look like. As long as it's symmetric, their distribution plays no role. And in particular, in this case, nowhere in the algorithm we need to work out p, because the only occurrence was in alpha, which has cancelled. So these are no longer there. And there are no other p's in the algorithm. That one here just says, how do we sample y? And that we have replaced with the assumption it is a step from a random walk, so old state plus a random increment. So for this version, we don't need to actually work out what is the transition density p. Good. So we could write down the algorithm like this. The most common case is where epsilon is normal distributed. So in general, that would look like this. And if we say the distribution of epsilon j is symmetric, this forces us to set mu equals to zero. So it must be epsilon is normal distributed with mean zero and variance sigma squared. And let's see what we get for this case. So in the algorithm, we already said alpha simplifies to just have pi of y over pi of x here. We don't have any reference to the transition density left because down here where we generate y, we know what to do. We just said for a random walk, we take the previous state, so xj minus 1 plus epsilon j. And for what I call the most common case, we would choose epsilon j 
now I'm a distributed with mean zero and some variance sigma squared. So that slightly simplifies the algorithm because again alpha is simpler and here we know how to generate these samples. This finishes our description of the random walk metropolis algorithm and in the next video I will show you how to actually use the algorithm in R.